Hello everyone and welcome. I'm excited for you to be here today. Um, this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a, a good stressful <laughs> playthrough, but this will be fun. Um, so if you don't know, if you haven't read the title, we're doing Unsettled by Orange Nebula. And um, I have only played it twice so far. So it's going to be... I, ha I have... I know how it works. I know how the game works. The, the mechanics of it are not too hard um but there is a lot going on in this game and there's a lot of small things you can do you can already kind of tell from up there that uh the map is already kind of laid out and big and there's a reason for that um so what i'll do is i'll very briefly kind of go over the key concepts of the game and then we're going to dive right in now this is not a solo game technically um you're not actually i don't think you're supposed to, not that you're not supposed to be able to solo it but it's not Legable as a solo game, but we're basically playing two handed, which allows us to play it solo. Um, I think you could do it with almost everything except for one scenario, supposedly. So let us head to the table. Actually, before we do that, I first have to say, if you're watching this video, you know, thank you, of course, but I always forget to do the usual stuff and I always. I always have to write it out, but um, yeah, if you're watching this live or later on, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications. It really helps the channel out. Um, you know, any views you give this, you know, really appreciate it. Um, make sure you follow me on Instagram. Instagram is where I post all my updates that let you know kind of the streaming schedule, what I'm thinking about doing, or if there's certain things you want to see, you can just message me on there, and, and we'll probably end up doing it. Um, there's also a Patreon if you want to support me, which allows me to do more of these videos and upgrade different things. One of the things we really need to do is get better lighting. I want to upgrade this camera that you're seeing right there. Um, there's a bunch of different things I would like to do, but I would need your help to do it. And then finally, there's three more things. Uh, I have an Etsy shop. I sell wooden board game accessories and tokens. Make sure to check that out if you're interested. I have a merchandise line. And lastly, there's an Amazon link if you're buying stuff on Amazon, just click on it, shop around. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it gives me a little bit, again, helps this channel out. Okay, now, with all of that out of the way, let's head to the table. All right. As you can already see, it does not fit because all the way over here, there's a bunch of stuff. All the way over here, there's important stuff, all the way here. So this is the main board. Now there's four sideboards. Now I'm gonna start top right and work my way clockwise. So when you see me grab top right, there is a time tracker. So every single time this time symbol comes up on a card or a board or whatever, um, I have to move this. When I move it all the way back around, so after it comes off this loop, endurance goes down. Endurance is your life, basically. All right, I don't, I don't know if endurance can go up, to be completely honest. I think it can, I think it technically can. But I don't think I've ever gotten to that point. There is no fighting in this game. There is no quote unquote bad guys or anything like that. You're just trying to survive on a stranded planet. Time is your enemy. And up on top is how much you trust your teammates. Trust is very important in this game when you're stranded alone on a mysterious planet where everything and anything possibly wants to kill you. So trust is important. And that's why I'll be moving with this marker and we'll get more into that. Um, but the first time I played this game, I thought, Trust isn't that important. I can just send my two people off and let them do their own thing and I failed miserably. So this is called the moment board. There are a bunch of different um, little tokens that signify different things that can come up. Basically, when I do the investigate option on the board, um, I will drop one of these tiles. I'll drop one of these things. I'll flip one of these cards you can see over on this side. And it is something special or unique um, an opportunity that I can do on the game, which can open up different aspects of the game. So that's over there. Again, you'll kind of see how it all gets played out once we start doing it, but just to give you a quick idea. Then we have, I don't even know what this board's called. Um, the building board, I guess. So this side, where all the big stuff is, is unique to this planet. Now, the way Unsettled works is essentially there's a core box where it has the uh, framework of the game where all the these trays are, the characters are, the player boards, these player boards are, and like tokens and stuff. The actual planet we're playing on is a separate box. So there's a bunch of those boxes. I think there's six of them out, right? Three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's six of them out right now. So special contents in this box are gonna be here. 
The box is also, it's hard to see, but there's, these cards are from the box, oops. And these planet cards are from the box. One second. Drop the card. Okay. So, besides on there, we have a card that signifies what Luna, which is like our little helper person can do for us. We have building research, we have laboratory research and a workshop that we can build. So there's three possible buildings and we'll get into all that stuff. Um, it allows us spe like to specialize in different things and things like that. Again, I'll give you everything you need to know as we go through. And lastly, there's a resource board. So this resource is for analyzing data. This is for unearthing materials and this is for making power. Only Luda can get data, only the node each one of these is called a node, which is the spot we're on is called a node. This is where we unearth materials. These black ones are just to, they're kind of like game markers, right? There's, there are certain things that we need to mark on the cards, we'll use them. And these are power, um, pa charge power, so it's uh, uh, from the dynamo. So it's negative and then positive power charge. Um, again, you basically use those for, for different things. We have, our standees, so we have a purple board. I don't know a name, if chat, you wanna name the purple character, feel free. And then we have blue, and then blue standee. And again, like I said, Luna. Now, normally, well, every single game begins on this ship card, right? You just landed off of your ship onto this mysterious planet, which is called Winora. I don't know how the other scenarios work. I just know for the first one, we have to lay it out like this, and I'll explain why we do in a second, once we get to the, the card specific. but. Just know that sometimes these cards aren't laid out like this if you see other people playing the game um it's just me right now because this is the very the very first scenario the very first box that you would ever play this is that scenario now on the player board is where most of your action is so what we have oops is a player board which has six spots indented where your cubes can go. They are not dice because you don't roll them. They're only counters, essentially. Each spot allows you to do a thing. You would take one of your dice and put it into this spot. Now, in this spot, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little arrow. It's a down arrow. So I'm currently on two. In order to put the die here, I would count down to one. All right, if I was at one, I would bring it down to the time symbol. If I was at the time symbol and put it in, we would reduce time from that first board we saw, um, but we could still do the action. Just time would speed up and it would kind of hurt us in the long run. Each spot does something different. So first off, give, this one gives you insight, which allows you to increase this track, which we'll get into later. Investigate does this whole board that I was talking about with opportunities. Traverse is like an extra move action. You're allowed to move once, but you can traverse and move again. And you can also carry people with you with that, which is fun. Support, which allows you to move distress, which we'll get into on another player. Support is really key. And I overlooked it the first like two times I played. Recover is good, except you really start to not trust each other when somebody just spends all their time recovering. And then finally is rest. And you can tell it's a different color than everything else because rest has to be done every turn. Okay, every turn, one of your three dice must go on rest. And instead of going down, it charges up one. Okay. Now, let's get the dice off. This is our endurance meter. When it goes all the way down, we're unconscious. If the entire team is unconscious, we lose. Over here is insight, where we're gonna specialize on a certain type of science. There's the build workshop, which is just what we saw over there. There is the laboratory, which we saw over there, and there is the research hut. We decide whichever one we want to do, blue, green, or red. Let's, say we just, let's just say we start with blue. Whenever we get insight, which is these purple little triangle things, we move it up one. When we get to the very top, we would take a blue token from over there, place it on, and then we could pick a new side. Now we have a specialty in this. We draw a card, special things would happen. It helps us be more proficient at that thing. Now, the last thing we have to set up on our boards, which I haven't done yet, you have to trust me that this is all randomized. I don't have this all memorized right now or anything like that. But the one other thing you do is there's a stack of these tiles. And we're gonna start with purple. And we're gonna take the first two and we get to choose one. So it, this is our personal, kind of like who we are basically. 
and one is to be an optimist and an optimist on both sides oh okay they're the same on both sides so there's an optimist and it, when we are trusting one another it gives us many positive benefits when we start to lose trust and have low trust it starts kind of hurting against us again this is another reason why this is important now where would this go so the optimist is a traverse where's traverse so it would cover this spot and that's where our cube would go now is on this spot and do this action instead of this action it's a way to change up the game a little bit now let's say we get low trust we would turn this over and this actually covers recover going to the back and something bad really happens when we're on this all right so when we use recover it doesn't end well but the traverse action is pretty good huh. and then caretaker same exact thing good side bad side so the optimist when we usually do traverse our pip goes down by one and then we can move and or carry a local explorer one node this Optimus lets us take an additional move action. So we couldn't carry someone, but we can move them. Well, we're thinking, what's the difference? This has an up arrow on it. So instead of our pip going down by one, it would actually go up by one, which is kind of interesting. If it got to the other side, it would do recover and change your upward face of your inside block then, which is this thing. And then, um, we would gain insight and we'd lower trust even more, which is not good. And this one, caretaker required each turn to cover over rest, allows us to increase the pips of two dice. Oh, that's pretty good too. Focus on self. So on the other side, it would cover support. And it wouldn't be great. Interesting. Actually, that one's not terrible. So the rest, the only problem with this one is a oh, rest would be two pips we could choose, which is interesting. So we could make our traverse better, but we couldn't carry. I kind of like the idea though. I like to make traverse better. All right. Okay, here we go. And then now for a blue character. One is investigate and one is theorize. Um, the one in my left hand, theorize, is called empath. Theorize would normally allow us to uh, let another player gain an insight. This one now would be for each of your distress also gain a pip. And you gain an insight. I don't know if I like that. And this one is investigate. So it goes down like normal. Pursue an opportunity on your note or gain insight plus a green thing. I like that. I'm not even gonna worry about the bad side. Okay, so that's that. That's kind of what changes up your game each time so you're not just like standard boards. Um, they're gonna focus on red. This one's gonna focus on blue because it's the color blue. So now how did I know that how to set this all up? First what we're gonna do is just read this first page just so you get a little feel for the planet itself. So this is Traverse Log 001 Wenora. Icky, sticky, beautiful. When we left Earth in search of bizarre, wondrous new worlds, this is exactly what we imagined. The circumstances are a bit more catastrophically on the verge of death than anticipated, but all in the face of uncertainty is the essence of exploration. Strange, gargantuan, fungal formations tower above us, swarming with alien creatures and dripping with bright liquids. Surfaces are covered in a mysterious, powdery substance. The air is thick, almost gelatinous, and there's an uncomfortable abundance of toxic looking tendrils and suction cups. It couldn't be more alien. It took almost an hour of low orbit skinning just to find a place to land. So dense in is the fungal vegetation. With a world this full, it's impossible to imagine we won't find the things we need to survive. Whether those things kill us is another question entirely. Let's go touch stuff. All right. So one of the things you'll get out of the box is these um, survival task cards. So these are the cards, they go in a certain order, it lists on top. So this one says, early onset hangriness. The trauma of the wormhole event might be getting to us. The loss of most of the crew, critical damage to critical systems, and the really, really, 
in the really real reality that we're unlikely to ever see any of our loved ones again, it's the little things that add up. So we're shaken, our energy is low, and no one has really been eating, which in some ways has worked to our advantage as our food stores are lacking. We're not saying we recommend catastrophic banishment beyond the edge of existence as a diet plan, but we're not not recommending it either. It's working for us so far, but soon the food thing is going to become a problem. Fortuitously, the long-range scanners uncovered this fungal jungle planet absolutely seething with bizarre organisms. And as scientists, if there's one thing we know about organisms, it's that they're often tasty. Much terribleness has uh, transpired, but none of that can be undone. We still, through luck, fate, or providence, have this ship and each other. And that's going to have to be enough. It will be enough. And if it's not, we have Luna. So we're all set. Let's go grab some grub. All right, so the next side shows the setup, right? So it's kind of hard to see, but this setup is just a mirror setup of what this is. So that's how I knew I had to do that. This card goes here so that we know that. Now on this side, it shows basically what our tasks are and what we're trying to do in the game right now. So it's a fungal out there. First impressions, sticky. Follow-up impressions, about the same. We need to deploy our mobile science structures if there's to be any hope of us doing anything at all efficiently down here. Construct the laboratory, research hut, and workshop on open build spaces. On these cards, as we flip them, you'll see an open build space. We'll get into that. And then we have to construct each of these huts. That is our job right now at the gate. So it isn't like rush to the end or try to push through. We have to construct those three things. That doesn't mean the end of the game. <laughs> it just means what we have to do in the beginning. All right. Hopefully you all got it. Like I said, if you have questions as we go along, please let me know and I'll be happy to answer it. Um, all right. So. The way I'm going to do this, I'm going to start with the left side and then go to the right side, just blue and purple, just to try to keep track. Um, I think I have everything set. So the way this works, as far as what your actions are, because that's really the only thing we haven't covered, is you are allowed to move up to your limit. Starting the game, your limit's one. There might be other things that let you move more, but starting off one. So you literally take your guy, gal, move them over, okay? You can also, and that's a choice, you don't have to move. The other thing you could do is move Luna. Luna moves from one spot to the other. When Luna goes on the map, or when anyone goes on the map, we flip it over and things happen and we'll see those things. And actually we can see on this card. You can see on this left side, there's two time symbols on the right side, the bottom and the top. What that means is when we cross into this card, we have to lower our time symbols by two. Now on this card, that leads to it, there might be also two time symbols. So for the go from this card to this card, maybe four time, or there may be zero on this one and two on this one, so there will only be two, okay? Now in the golden spot here, it says, when entering, if you possess fungal host, we do not, we regain two pips and two um, insight. So that's just something else that's going on. That's just the name of it. Sometimes there'd be stuff down here that shows if there's certain uh, resources that are on the planet for us to find. Sometimes there's open spaces. There's other different things. We will get into all of that as we go along. The one thing that can happen is, Luna, like we said, Luna can make a turn move. One, the other thing she could do is scan a planet. What we do is we pick one of these dice, we roll it, and then some data or some materials go onto that planet for us to collect or Luna to collect, okay? And we'll get more into that later, but just so you know, those are all of our optional things. The only things we have to do, and this is what you have to do, is you have to play all three dice, or I'm sorry, cubes. I don't want to get it wrong, they're cubes. You have to play them, all right? The only space you have to play one of them on is the rest space. So I do blue first, one of these three has to go on the rest, the other two red, or the other two cubes, anywhere else I want as long as I can play and do the action and, and pay for the action. Those are the only like real rules that you have to do. And it's literally this character, then this character, this character, this character. There is no planet upkeep, right? There's nothing special that happens with the planet where you have to do anything. None of that. It's just one character, then the other. You have a bunch of free actions. Um, we'll get into them as we go along. They're not really crazy important to know right now, but there are a bunch of free actions. Free actions can interrupt other actions. It, this is the part of the game that gets a little confusing is the timing. Um, but as far as the most important thing to know is you can move, Luna can move, Luna can scan, you must use all three cubes and one of them must go on rest. As long as you understand that concept or those concepts, 
you're probably pretty good with this game. So we're gonna start with Blue. Now the first thing I wanna do is move Luna. The reason being is because these time symbols on the edge of cards or things that may affect your um, your characters, they don't affect Luna, okay? They will not affect her. So we're gonna move her. So we're gonna move her to this spot. We'll flip over this planet. So this planet right there, you can see it has a square just like one of these squares. I can now use that square to play a dice, okay? So it's now an available spot to play. And um, you have to be there. To, I'm pretty sure you have to be there to play it. I, I can't really remember off the top of my head. But it says entangled, we would lose two pips and remove all distress from yourself, which is kind of fantastic. I just want to see something really quick. Actually, uh, there are a bunch of small rules. I want to make sure I get them right. I think you have to be on the tile, I want to say. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, seven. Yeah, action while on this node. Okay. So in order to do that action, the physical be on. So anyway, Luna is on it. Now the other option we could do with Luna is scan. Now, the one thing I want to point out is this character can use Luna and can scan as well as this character. It's not like I use it once for this character and then it's done for that round. Each character can use Luna. So we're gonna scan for Let's scan for green, okay? So one, two, three, pips. So we take our three green things, we put them on here. The way we would get this is on this top board up here, there's a spot where we can use one of our dice and get some green things, as long as we're, we are on that node. So that's Luna for the blue character. Now the blue character's three moves. Um, first, we're gonna move them. Now there's nothing on the edge here, nothing on the edge here, so there's no punishment for moving, okay? So we're gonna move them in there. There's a punishment for moving this way, but not this way or this way. And we also get an insight for going this way, which is kind of nice. So... All right, let's get one of the green things. So we're gonna take our green die, lower the pip by one, because it's minus one. And since we used the green die on the green space, we get an extra benefit from it. So we get two of these. Now there's just a collection pool on this thing. Actually, I'll just show it to you. So this was two, okay? Lowered it to one. There's an extra benefit for playing the green die, plus the normal benefit. So two goes here, everyone can use those green things. Now, I am going to I'm going to use the red one to gain power. I'm going to pop up two power because the red matches and use an extra benefit. The last one has to be on rest, so it's going to go up to three because this is an up arrow, and time advances one. That's the end of blue turn. Simple as that. Purple turn. Turn. Um, they're gonna move Luna straight across to here. All right. So when entering this, if you possess something, you can do some stuff. But I don't possess that. And when you cross over the spot, there's a time thing. We're gonna scan with Luna to blue. Good data. All right. We're gonna move our purple. Uh, character over here as well. That's their one move movement that they have. Um, I kind of like the idea of getting the blue stuff now. So we use the blue die. Oh shoot, I'm sorry. The one thing I should have done after this character finishes, you collect all your dice and you put them back. That's how you actually signify that you're done with your turn. I should have mentioned that once you are done placing all your dice, you recollect your dice, then you're done. So blue. It's gonna put there over there, collect these two things because the space that Luna is on, and we get those two cubes. So now we have two of each thing, right? We have two database, two stockpile, and two uh, positive power. And 
We could possibly use those to expend those for different things. All right. So the other thing I can do is we could work on doing opportunities. Now, sometimes opportunities work out really well in our favor. And I think I want to do that more so to kind of show you all what it is. And plus, we're already there. It's kind of a safe spot. We could, we could kind of take our time, but we can't take too much time. So let's investigate with a green die. The reason being is because this will give us one insight. So this goes up the insight track. And like I said, when this goes around, we gain proficiencies, we gain bonuses. Good, thing, good things happen with that one. Pursue an opportunity in your node. These are opportunity cards. So first thing we gotta do is put this white token on to show that we have already found one opportunity for it. So you just can't like sit on one tile and just do opportunities over and over and over. We're gonna do this side. And then you take this opportunity marker and just place it on there so you know where it is. The reason why it's so big is sometimes opportunities get stuck to you. So you can put your person on it and follow around with it. That's why that marker is so big. All right, so this opportunity gets the skittish pentapod, which is this. Skittish pentapod, a scampering in the undergrowth uh, draws your attention to a wildly cautious five-legged creature. The, fr the frailty of its build is impossible within known science. The slightest move to approach results in the creature's immediate and frantic retreat. Immediately, each local explorer without fungal host places themselves on an adjacent node. So neither of us have it. Each local explorer. So that's both of us. So we could just go back to the ship. If we go here, we get a time. Actually, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to go back to the ship. So we have to go to an adjacent node. Now, the way that we get this is we have to go back to this spot. We have to place one of our dice there, and then we're good to go. So we have to take a rest action. So we're gonna do red, it's gonna power up to the third spot, rest action there, so we're almost halfway down with the rest already. Hopefully this is making sense. We collect our dice. And then it's our turn again. Blue, it's now blue's turn again. So blue is gonna have Luna keep going out there. The reason being is because we're trying to find three spots where we can build our buildings. So let's search for Luna. Luna is gonna go up here. There's one. All right, so you can kind of see there's this big circle. That means you can build something there. Well, this is good. This is a good path to go. So we'll do that. Luna's gonna scan some green stuff. It's one. That's good. All right, blue is gonna move back here. And let's do this opportunity. I think this opportunity could be a good one. Um, and I'll show you some of the benefits that you get with opportunities. So we're going to take our three pips. It's going to lower it down to the time symbol. And I think we get the benefits immediately. That one I'm not 100% sure on. Um, I want to say you do. So we do three. We would get this token. And then... We get, um, oh, what is it? We get one of these, the scientific anomaly card. So there's a bunch of these purple cards, okay? Just pick the top one, blue gets it. Now on it, it says powdery. Um, so it must be present, we don't have it yet. So vacuum up fine particles, we can discard the card and all explorers within one node lose one distress. So we haven't really talked about distress, but we will. Um, so you can see it's kind of down here off the side of the board. We can get a bunch of anomalies. We also get two insight. One, two. Once we pick that card up, or once we pick our die up to reset, um, we flip the card back under, this all goes away. We're good to go. So that's their one move. I want to do this investigate. No, wait, we can't pursue an opportunity. Never mind, sorry. Let's do, try and think of what else to do. We need to, we need to move is what we really need to do. So actually I'm just gonna traverse over. So we'll spend one, since it was a red, we get an insight and we move into a carry, but there's no one to carry. We crossed over a time symbol. So we move our time tracker down one. And this last one has to go on rest. 
that goes up one. So we're getting near the end of our track, and I'll show you in a second what happens. Um, now it is Blue's turn, or I'm sorry, Purple's turn. Um, we use, or we have to collect our dice. As you can see, my dice aren't doing great. This card is now discarded. I'm just gonna throw it in the bottom face up because I don't have a lot of room. And we are good to go. Purple, we're gonna have Luna move to this spot. I'm curious. Ah, uh, dang. All right, when entering, if you do not possess Fungal Host, which we do not, we take a Distress card. So this is a terrible card to go on. Again, this is why we send Luna in the first place. Um, so we're gonna let that go. We're gonna let that go. So, we're gonna do our first action is gonna be our move to move to this spot. Then I wanna move again. So I'm going to traverse but I'm not going to use this one. I'll use green to go up. Take an additional move. We went over a uh, time spot, so we have to keep the, the time moving. I want to use this. I'm going to give them an insight, I think. This is going to go down one. Give another person an insight, which goes up. Which is nice that, again, this is a lot of teamwork, right? Parts of my board help my other person. So that's why it's kind of good to keep them together. Now, again, I've been moving first, then doing my actions. That's not how you have to do things. You can do actions first or one action, then move, two actions, move, you know, three, and then move. Um, I need to actually time that a little better. And then finally, I'm going to rest with this one. And now, let me very carefully do this. My time marker is here, right? It would now go off the board. It goes all the way back to the beginning. And everyone loses one endurance on their board, which is not great. So this goes down one, this goes down one. Again, when it hits the red, no good. And I also have no idea about, I know this is like the easiest one, but it's still tough. So. All right, let us collect all of my dice. And we're gonna move Luna just one spot down. Cause I wanna get down here and see what, what's down here. All right, so blue, I want to get their inside up and start helping them out. Man, my dice are rough. So we're going to do it with this die. Right? Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, we're going to do it with this one. So I want to help this this character gain insight. As you get insight, certain special things happen. Now, since I use a time thing, time goes down because I can't turn the pip anymore. But it doesn't mean you can't use the dot or the Q. Sorry. My character also gains an insight, so they get one for the special ability. I gain one. I'm sorry, no. I gain one for the special, but they gain one for the uh, for the normal ability. So they got one. I would get mine since it comes off. We have gained mastery and then we can change sides. So let's change to green because they're working on red. Okay. So. We have a blue mastery, which is good. And that's the other thing. So when you're on the same tile as your teammate, you can use their mastery or comprehension of things, right? So even though this character has blue, if they're both together, it's like both of them can use the blue mastery. Okay, so that's important to know. Um, and here's the thing, I wanna get up there because I wanna get one of my, my buildings done. Um, but, 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 but I'm just kind of thinking. I have to make sure doing everything all right. I have to make sure that I feel like I might be missing a distress somewhere, which we can get into one second. I don't think I am. I think I'm doing all right. There's a lot of like little small rules that I always worry I'm, I'm losing out on. I think we're right. See, page 20. Hmm. 
Yeah, I think um, I think we're good still. I think we're good. I don't think I messed up yet on that. All right, I haven't done my move action. I kind of what I'm kind of thinking is traversing and carrying that person up there and then moving i think that's what we're gonna do so we're gonna traverse carry our our friend up here we're good to go we didn't pass anything on there so we're good and then we have to rest which increases this one to one time moves on all right everything comes back this character's turn we're gonna move luna down here uh okay we're still not doing anything we need which stinks they're going to build a blue thing um the blue research lab so let's use the blue die to build the research hut and since we have mastery we don't have to use time that's the two options we can use mastery or time that's going to go there. Let us Actually, I think that could be any die. So, we're actually going to use um green. Let's use green. Cuz blue, I'm going to theorize I'm going to gain insight for that and they're going to gain insight for that. And then I have to use rest, which advances time. Okay, so we collect this. Now, good news, we have one of our three buildings. Blue person's turn. We're going to move Luna over here. All right, so find respite, which is nice. Allows us to just kind of like use our cube to level up one spot if we make it down there. And we know the last two spots have to be around here. So that's something. So, oh, um, oh, this should be flipped over. So, we can now take this as a free action, and we can do trade in one of our blue cubes, which we're going to. We have two over there, and let's just gain insight. You could do it again if you want, but I, I think I only want to do it once. I want to do it once with this character too. So we're going to, oh geez. Um, let's do, oh, I feel like there's nothing I really want to do with these, some of these characters. Um, So another character gains insight, but I have to use blue. We have to rest with blue. That's for sure. We can do this, which would gain insight for us, which we might actually do that. So we're going to do that. Oh no, we don't want to pursue. Do we want to pursue an opportunity? Let's pursue an opportunity. This might be worth doing. So we're going to use purple this time for good luck. And our opportunity says Azura Paste Rift. A series of fleshy tubes peel open their tops, revealing pools of the bright paste and emitting a strange energy. A mole-covered creature stops to investigate. When it touches the paste, it vanishes, reappearing moments later with a hardened crystalline shell and several companions. They could do it. So immediately, spend two... Oh, I'm sorry, gain two power, which is nice. So we're up to four. Botanical crystals are here. And we just have to spend one die to lower a pit by one, which is good. I'm probably going to do it with this one because they already have one. Um, so this also gains an insight, and we get one green uh, because of our special kind of ability thing. Cool. I'm not going to traverse with them anymore. That was the one thing I was thinking about doing. 
Uh, but, 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 let's see. I could just do that with that card. Oh, shoot. The one thing I forgot. I'm sorry. Blue. I should have taken the robotics thing. All right. I forgot. When I get this, you also get a certain card that matches the color. It's one thing I slightly messed up on. I'm sorry. So now this ability allows you to deploy a mini tractor beam for the cost of one blue cube. Luna pulls an adjacent, or I'm sorry, pulls an explorer from the adjacent node onto her node, ignoring all node edge symbols. Is that the other benefit of getting masteries? You can pull those cards, it helps you out a lot. Sorry, should have done that. Um, all right, let's see. Let's see. I. Don't know what I really want to do. Let us. Ooh, okay. We're well, first of all rest. So that moves that up one. This red one. I guess we can traverse. We will traverse, so we gain one more insight because we uh, match the symbol. And we will traverse over to this one. Alright, sweet. So, we gain insight and a time. So time moves up one, we're almost about to circle around again. Insight, we're off that, we get another green thing. Now green, let me get the card before I forget. We can remove one stockpile and ingest pearlescent slurry. An explorer currently within one node may ignore time symbols on edge nodes for the remainder of this turn. Limit once per turn. That's pretty good. Pretty, pretty nice. Um, so that allows us to do that. We have to go back around. We might as well work on red so we have one of each because why not? But more importantly, we found the other spot where we can build stuff on. So let's get our dice back up. Good to go. Um... All right, this isn't too bad. So now we can keep using these to just cost different things. So let us move Luna, purple purple players turn. We're gonna move Luna into this spot. There's our last building. All right, sweet. We have to kind of come down this way and we might as well scan for blue. It's a two. So two blue cubes. Maybe we can work on her collecting that. Okay, that one. I want that opportunity because I'm hoping this will help us. So let's use this red pip or red die go down too. So we're going to get this. We're going to get an anomaly card, uh, powdery, vacuum up fine particles. We must be present to a blue thing. Uh, all explorers within one node discard, um, whatchamacallit, distress. Which we'll get into. I know we haven't really covered Distress yet. It hasn't happened yet, which is really nice. Um, which I feel like it should have by now, but we're getting lucky, I guess. So there's that. Also, place all other explorers onto this node. All explorers. Oh, so he comes back over here. Gain insight and a pip up one. So we'll increase the pip up by one. We'll increase this pip up by one. He gains insight. He gained insight. We're on the same thing again. Oh shoot, I put the wrong thing on. Oh well. So, still this character's turn. Let's get the blue. No, let's not worry about that yet. Oh no, yeah, let's get the blue ones. The lotus by one. Let's get these two blues. Now we're good, and we have to rest. There's two. Everyone's endurance goes down one. So we're, I feel like we're really running out of time. We need to we need to hustle. This is not going as I, as quickly as I would like. All right, let's start being aggressive. So I'm going to yeah, we're going to start being really aggressive. Hmm. All right.
Okay. We are going to do this first. Ingest pearlescent slurry. An explorer currently within one node, so that we're going to use ourselves, may ignore time symbols on node edges for the remainder of this turn. So we, we pay one green, which we have three, now we have two. We don't have to worry about time symbols. So we're going to do this. It's going to cost us a time, which is fine. And we gain one of those. And we're going to carry our buddy over here. Arca? Cool. Now we're going to take our actual move action and move here. We don't have fungal host, which is nuts. I feel like we should for now. Um, and then we're going to use a blue to deploy a mini tractor beam. We had three, now we have two. And it pulls an adjacent, or I'm sorry, pulls an explorer from an adjacent node onto her node, ignoring all node edge symbols. I like it. So then we're going to use our green die, bring it down to the symbol. We have green mastery. I'm going to put it right there. So at least that'll be the other laboratory. So hopefully we're, we're picking up speed now. Last thing we have to do is rest. Moves that one. There we go. So we have to take all of our dice back. Uh, what's the last one? That one. Laboratory. Okay. So the other things we could do, uh, anywhere we can spend one blue cube and get one insight. And anywhere we can spend one green and move our pips up one. So that's the other benefit of building these buildings in general. Pretty good stuff. We're probably actually on this person's turn. What we're going to do is spend one of those blue to gain insight, which is going to give us red. We gain a, a, or orange is not really red. Breakthrough, and it's limit once per turn. We can roll the blue data die to determine your range. You may swap places with Luna if she's within that range. That's fine. And then we'll we'll start working on green. Why not? Okay. Cool. Um, we're doing this one, right? So that was my free action. Haven't moved. So let's build red because we have proficiency in it now. And I think technically it's not, it's not built yet. So we haven't actually completed this. It's not until we're done. So once this turn ends, we would have built it and then we're done. Um, okay, so we're here. We still haven't moved with her. Um, let's see. We have to rest. We're probably going to rest with green. What can we do with blue? Blue dye. We could do theorize and start working on insight some more. I don't feel like that's great though. Oh wait, this should have been... Right. That should have been done like that. Um, <laughs> Let's see. We could traverse. Which we don't really need to do right yet. You know, that's just, you know what, we're going to do blue. We're going to hope theorizing helps. Increase everyone. I'm going to rest. Then do that. Okay. Collector cubes. This flips over. Hey, hey. Okay, we did it. So now that we finished this, we pick up this card, turn it over, and technically we go on this spot and then you read it, but we'll move, we'll, uh, we'll read it out loud. Rumble in the fungal. So a massive embryonic sac has spawned in a nearby swamp, which, you know, good for it. Help yourself, sac. Except now it's churning out crawly tentacled creatures. I'm not sure we like that. However, Luna determines that the tiny tentacled creatures feed on toxic protozoans within the spore clouds, which is great because those were becoming a problem. That's what I did wrong. So, that's what I completely forgot. Um, the one thing that happens. And that's why I wasn't getting distressed and I thought I should have. Every time we entered one of these cubes, there should have been things placed on it. Now, luckily, 
We actually didn't backtrack that much. Um, we didn't go down there. Okay. Oh man, we really screwed that up. Shoot, I am so sorry. I knew I was getting something wrong. See, and that's the thing. Each of these these places have like little rules. And this isn't a normal rule. So every single time that we start on a black cube, we would draw a distress card. And that's what we should have been doing this time. And we didn't. So we will start doing it now. We would have lost this scenario. Because there's no way. I can't believe I forgot to do that. Oh well. So... Again, it's important to read your little book. Your little book has all the primers. I completely forgot about the black cube one. Um, it only happens when an explorer leaves a node, then a cube is put down. So actually no one's left that one. So that would be put down. So they should be having a bit more issues right there. Um, but we'll get into that in a second. So basically when they start their turn there, they would draw a distress card. And what we'll do is we'll just draw the first one and, and put one down. Um, so basically what happens is you're infected. When this happens, we lose trust. And then the moment you have two or more distress cards, draw a hallucination. So that covers a spot. I can no longer use this spot. That's the that's kind of the whole gimmick of distress cards. Gosh, I'm frustrated. I knew I was missing out. Um, Yeah, we're just gonna do that one. I think there would have been another one over here, but whatever. All right, so the reason that this is important, I just realized this, is because Luna determines that the tiny tentacle creatures feed on toxic protozoans, with protozoans within the spore clouds, which is great because those were becoming a problem. They are now. Also, the tentacles are very, very sticky, which seems pretty on brand for this place. Place the cellophone nest on the Swampy Quagmire node, then stack all 11 tentacle tokens on there. All right, so that goes there. So the way that this works is tiny tentacles feed on spore clouds. We would like there to be less spore clouds so our suit's filtration systems don't fail. It's a good thing we're scientists and can connect these dots. When an explorer leaves the node adjacent to the nest, a tiny tentacle sticks to them. Place one of them in here. When an explorer with a tiny tentacle enters a node with a spore cloud, which is those little black cubes, they gain distress as normal, then the tiny tentacle consumes the spore cloud. Replace the black spore, spore cloud marker with a tiny tentacle token. Place the removed one onto here. It must deliver four of them to consume them. So basically, we have to go and go get these like little black dots, basically. The way that these came up again is every time you move off of a card, they pop up. So, with all that mess being done, it is now this character's turn. Oh my gosh, I'm so frustrated. I'm so sorry I messed it up. Let's move over to this side. It's another build spot, which we don't need. Crystalline Force. Now, Luna doesn't kick up the dirt. She's like hovering above the ground. So, it's important to know. Let's roll a blue die for Luna, which is a one. Now we're, we are going to move with our first action. We crossed over an insight and a time marker. Now that's when we put a cube. So you see kind of how it works, like a fault, it happens behind you. Um, again, it would have affected us a couple times small. We could have basically done support, which would have helped us out. The other thing we have to do is because our trust is low, we have to switch these things to the other side. Which usually is not great. So, this character now... We moved one. We're kind of running out of time. So I'm going to do this and traverse one. So we'll traverse in one second. We get a red or orange, not red. Special ability, augmented yank. Gather up the two materials from this node and or adjacent nodes into the stockpile. Okay, cool, so we can suck in green. This goes around, we'll work on 
blue. Now nah, we're working on green. Now nah, we're working on black. Sorry. Then uh, we have to move. So we're going to move to this spot. That is going to cost us one time. And we kick up dust. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Now, when we move away from this spot, we would get one of these things, right? That's what it said. Yeah, leaves a node adjacent. That's the only node adjacent. We would get one of these things, um, which we'll use to collect different things. And we'll get the stress card. So we kind of need to start working together with our other characters. So what we'll do is we'll rest, increase that one by one. Uh, everyone's endurance goes down one. So we're more than halfway through losing. Cool. And um, I have a blue one left. I right, see so artificer activate a breakthrough of a local ex of a local explorer and no resource costs. All right, so what we're going to do is actually do this artificial artificial thing. And Luna is going to pull us. Now, when Luna does, we're moving from the adjacent thing. We grab one of these spawn tokens. Make sure we're getting this right. Explorer leaves a node adjacent to the cell phone pod. A tiny tentacle sticks to them. Okay. This also gets one of those things. When we enter a node with a spore cloud, we gain the stress as normal, which we'll get into in one second. Then the tiny tentacle consumes the spore cloud and we put it onto here. And we lose it, right? Yeah, we lose that. So we kind of have to keep going back and forth. Uh, replace the black spore cloud. Oh, we replace the tiny tentacle marker. I guess so it shows it can't happen again. Okay, so we get infected. When gained, we lower our trust. Pips go down by two, because we can't actually lower our trust anymore, which is great. We'll cover, recover. And that's it. Hold. Oh, what we can do is, because we're, we have the blue thing. So what we can do is we can discard this blue card and all explorers within one node lose this distress. So we'll do that. Okay. That character's turn. Luna. I don't even know what Luna should do. We need to traverse. All right, let's move the old fashioned way. We're going to move. Oh wait, when we start our turn, we get an infected card. We lose two more pips, so we'll lose one here, one here. We'll go over and investigate. We got two, so we get a hallucination card, which... Engage, fungal host, hey, hey, fungal host. Hallucination, the skin, the sky begins to melt slowly, thickly, running down the strange fungal trees. Then they too collapse slowly down, an ooze that spreads across the ground, filling each divot and compression in the soil. And then you melt as well, spilling across and seeping into the ground when you become truly alive. You are now one with the technical network. Once on each of your turns, you may, <coughs> excuse me, lower your pips by two to place yourself on any node. Well, that's fun. So they're fungal hosted. All right, so. I only have to, to get one of these if I start my turn, so I can only get one distress thing at a time, which is good. I kind of want to swap spots with Luna.
I don't need to yet. So, what I really need to do is get all the way over there. So let's, let's do a normal movement down here. We don't pass any edge things. Then we're going to traverse and we gain insight. And we gain another insight for um, going here or crossing over there. Then we're going to need a spore thing in a second. Well, once we move away. Um, let us rest. Hold on. Actually, I want to switch with spots we're doing it. So let's, let's spend a power. Roll the blue die. It just has to be one or higher. Oh, thank goodness. Swap spots with blue. Okay. Let's do, let's do theorize for right now. Everyone gains insight. Hopefully this will help us. And then we'll rest with this one. Move this down one. Oh, okay. Luna is just gonna move up here for blue player's crit turn. Oops, let's collect your dice. Rare polymers, we don't have that right now. Okay. Okay. Blue is gonna help our buddy. So they're gonna give support. Cost one. And we remove one distress from another local explorer. So we're gonna remove this one. And we gain trust again, which is more important. So all of our Things slip or flip back to the other side. Sweet. And then let us re we're gonna rest with this one. So you can decrease this one. Um we haven't moved yet. I feel like we should. Purple moved away from this. So purple has a sport thing. I just have to remember that. Um, because they were here, they moved one adjacent spot away. Right? It's one, when the explorer leaves the node adjacent to it. Okay. We're going to use our movement to go in here. Then we're going to traverse here. So it takes one of these things with us. And then we enter a node with a spore cloud. Spore cloud. We gain distress as normal. See, it's weird that they say you gain distress as normal. Because it doesn't say when you enter it, though, I thought. For sure, no. Yeah, it doesn't say. Yeah, it's interesting that it says like normal, but that one doesn't say it. So we'll just say when we enter it with one of those things, we gain an infected. We'll put it there. Our trust thing goes down a little bit. This goes here. So at least we're up to two on there. And that's everything. Oops. Okay, now this character goes. They still have one of these things, so we could do it there, which is nice. Um, so that's the first. Um, yeah, I guess let's theorize. So I gain one, which means I gain a green. Me a green ability. A local explorer may get rid of distress. Perfect. That's exactly what we needed. So we get blue. And another one gains an insight. Cool. Now we can spend the green thing to get rid of one of these, which is nice. Then we can move. Use our spore cloud. We get a um, whatever it's called distress like normal the moment you have two more hallucinations yep and then are uh, we lose two pips this goes down and that goes down okay
Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. And then let's traverse. All right, we'll rest with this one. Here's this, and then we will traverse with this one. So as we move, we gain a thing. All right, cool. Now it's that person's turn, but we really need to kind of just like recover, right? We are not doing well. So, oh, and time advance because we, we move there, we cross there. Um, uh, we're not local. Oh, we could probably move, right? Um, hmm. Oh wait, do we have fungal host? No, their purple is the fungal host. It stinks, it could have soaked up energy. All right, let's move. We gain insight from moving. So that's our one move action. Luna's still not going to do anything because I don't, I don't know what I want with her yet. Let us traverse. So we gain insight. We go here. It advances two time. So everyone's endurance goes down one. So we're, we're at the very end of the game. And we're not, we're, we're not going to win. <laughs> um, but that's okay. Then we're gonna rest, which advances time. And then I'm going to support, which advances time. They get rid of their infected card and we have trust again. Oh shoot, that should have been other side. Oh well. Okay. Blue is done. First thing I'm gonna do Is I will do support. They get rid of their infected card. And we trust each other, which means this goes up one higher and we can increase the pips by two. So we're gonna increase one pip there, one pip there. This one's gonna go on rest. And then we're gonna move. That's gonna go there. They're gonna get a distress card. Which lowers our friendship basically and that's that so when all four boxes are filled discard markers in advance perfect I'm gonna say it happens immediately but I'm not 100% sure so welcome to the fungal all right so we gain trust back which is good so they should have flipped to the dark side they go back up to light good news you control the spore clouds up here or I'm sorry good news the spore clouds appear to be under control uh, thanks to Tiny Tentacles. Other news, Tiny Tentacles aren't really a thing anymore because the nest has matured into a teeming swarm of giant tentacle terrors. Hey, that's fun. Return all the Tiny Tentacle tokens back to the nest. They now have grown into giant tentacle terrors that no longer feed on spore clouds and no longer have our respect. At the start of every single turn, place a tentacle token on the node adjacent to the nest, then move all to or tentacles not on the nest two spaces toward the nearest explorer in the case of a tide they move toward the tide option who will next be or is currently active the tentacle terror reaches an explorer it secretes its brain venom and explodes causing one distress to the explorer return that token to the nest and then our card says we've got fungal games right enough of this it's time to get real about getting food and getting out Obtain six materials from nodes using the unearth action, placing them in the boxes below. You may not use materials already in the stockpile. That's things. Once the boxes are filled, you may process them at the laboratory with the appropriate comprehension present. Wow. Okay, so. <coughs> Excuse me. We have to collect all of our tokens. That's easy. Let's see what we have to do again. Turn all the tiny tokens back to the tokeness. 
At the start of every turn, place a tentacle token on the node adjacent to the nest, then move all tentacle tokens not on the nest two spaces toward the nearest explorer. So we kind of need to run away fast. All right, let's start a turn, it goes there, then moves two spaces. So it's this character's turn. Pretty sure we already moved. And we need to unearth action. We need to unearth materials, which means we need Luna to come back down here. So we haven't done anything with Luna. Come on, Luna. Or let's move her over here. Okay. Okay. Well, unearth materials where Luna is one. We need six total. All right, we will traverse to move in action. Move up here. Uses the time. Oh, we're about to be dunzos. Start of the next player's turn. This goes here, then moves two spots. This is the new active player. They get a card. Now, I'm pretty sure, so I'll make sure one thing, because you know, I've already screwed up. All right, so distress. I just removed the bottom of the draw bar. Okay, cool. So, again, distress lowers our trust. Means this goes down, this goes down. I'm gonna cover this. All right. Little thing in your brain. What happens when it's. Does it go away? Let's see. Return that token to the nest. Okay. So this token gets returned to the nest. So. Well, first thing we gotta do is move, right? So we're gonna move over here. We're gonna move. One more up. Oh, shoot. Shoot, 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 shoot. shoot. So I moved one. Did I move? Yeah, because I got hit there. So uh, I was going to use this green, which means none of these side symbols do anything. So I moved, the side symbol doesn't do anything. I will traverse again. That symbol still does nothing. Uh, I will rest with this. We're one turn away from losing. And I can support my local friend. They get rid of one of their infected cards, which is nice. And we trust each other once again. So this goes back up. This goes back up. All right, the problem is now this goes out. That goes here. Get a distress card. We distrust each other again. <laughs> my turn. Um, it doesn't really matter what I do because at the end of the thing I gotta do rest which is gonna lower endurance Which lowers everyone down to red and we lost so That is that we are a solid loser uh -huh. And we still even If we finish this there's still one thing we have to left to do and I'm not gonna tell you what it is But there, there is one thing I left you have to do so that is unsettled. Um, that is the game. I screwed up royally. Um, I probably actually should have lost a lot faster, to be completely honest. Um, because with these black cubes, cubes, I remember we sat here for like a turn, so we should have had to stress a little bit faster. But there was also time we kind of didn't know what to do with our, our dice. So it's, it's maybe a little bit of a wash. Because um, we didn't go too high on the trust track, so it's not like we got a ton of bonuses. So again, it hurt us, but it wasn't the worst thing in the world. The hallucination thing actually kind of would have helped us sometimes because some of them like we could have done this and you know got our dice way back up different things like that should have probably done more opportunities and didn't do them but yeah that's that's unsettled in a nutshell this is the easy box 
And this is the very first scenario. So to give you an idea of how tough this game might actually be, there are scenarios, there it is. Um, yeah, so hopefully, with the exception of that, the cube rule is specifically for this planet. It does not change. If you were to play some other scenario, that might not be a rule. It's probably not going to be a rule. So it's not like you have to worry about that every single game or anything. It's just scenario specific. Read the rule book. It'll help you out. Um, that was just my bad. There's some other things I probably could have done a little more efficiently. I just didn't. Um, but yeah, that is Unsettled by Orange Nebula. It um, Just some quick final thoughts. I um, I love it. I, I really love it. I think it's a lot of fun, even though it's not a solo game. Um, and it's not mechanically hard. There's a lot going on to keep track of, which can be tough. You just have to take your time, go through it. It's easier when you're not streaming. Um, Cause I'm sure I missed some of these edge things, but um, it's fun. It's fun to try to balance everything. It's fun to balance the bad cards, try to get good stuff, worrying about the time, trying to figure out, all right, how aggressive should we be on, you know, advancing the game? Or should we start looking for some opportunity cards, right? Or, you know, should we be mastering things? There's a cool balance of different things you can do in the game. And that, that's kind of what I really like about it the most is just how much everything goes over or how much balance there is. Um, I glanced through the other boxes. They are, they have the same tokens, some of the same tokens, but they are much different. Like there are some fun things I saw in those boxes or some different things. So it is really, really cool. But um, yeah, like I said, if you like this video, despite me messing up, um, you know, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, um, you know, turn on notifications. If you want me to play this game again more in the future, let me know. It's, it's a really fun game to play and, and hopefully you learn through it. Maybe I won't, I won't make a mistake next time. Um, past that, again, any questions, let me know on the, in the comments on this video or you know, reach out to me on Instagram and I'll be more than happy to answer it. Uh, like I said, it's a fantastic game. It does play solo. I, th I think every one but one scenario. So like this is a scenario in one of the boxes. Each box comes with three scenarios. So in one of the boxes, one of the scenarios, I think can't technically be done solo. But you could probably figure out a way to do it. But um, yeah, it, it, it plays well solo. It's just you got to two-hand it and it might be a little hard to do that sometimes. Doing more than two would be really rough. Um, but I do think having four players might help you out in this game a little bit more. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. And I will see you tomorrow for uh, Too Many Bones. Take care, everyone.